Wednesday. Happy hump day. I'm here with my friend Greg. The last time I got to hang out with Greg, we were in China and the amazing in China trip. And we had a great time there, saw a lot of great places and uh, met a lot of great faces. Uh, and I asked Greg because he's got so much knowledge you know, in the e-commerce world and, um, and his thing is customer support. And I was like, Greg, what's customer support? And we got in all these, you know, conversations, uh, in China about this. And so I asked Greg to come on the show today and share with us a little bit about how this is something all of us want to know, how do we reduce or remove some of those low star reviews? We all know how that is, right? Our, our listings get tanked. We don't know what to do. Um, and so Greg's going to share with us today some steps that we can take um, to reduce those one star reviews or low star reviews, as Greg calls them. Uh, but before we do that, Greg, why don't you just say hi and tell everybody a little bit about you and where are you coming from? You're coming from Thailand, right? Yeah, look, it's only it's only two o'clock in the morning. But as I always say, sleep is overrated, right? So <laughs> that, that's OK. That's OK. So look, we uh, we started selling on Amazon back in 2014 and 15. And look, it was a little bit different back then. I won't say easier. It was different, right? So you got some low star reviews. You could go and buy in some more reviews to try and, you know, push those to the bottom and get your average up. Um, and so we'd outsource pretty much everything we could. It was really going well. And then I don't know what it was. Maybe it was something in the water. Our outsource team one morning started just sending replies that were just wrong they were just they were just wrong um so we brought it you know we brought it all back in house uh and and started to focus on it ourselves which is a painful part of the process a neighbor of ours a chance conversation she had just taken early retirement uh and she had a customer service background so she got in built sops and and kind of you know got our structure back sort of thing um and around that time a uh, a colleague uh of ours was selling on amazon and it started to go extremely well and he said look you know how can you know can you guys help me out and we said yeah well okay we will then his brother and then other people in their network and and i don't know within four or five months we, we suddenly had you know this business and it was the decision are we going to keep trying to fix our product which was still struggling and quite honestly the niche had got you know um pounded it was a race to the bottom or are we just going to run with this customer service um business and so so we did it was it was kind of an easy choice if you know what i mean i've got a customer service background from about 100 years ago so it was inherently something i knew about um and then we ran about five months six months kind of under the radar and beta making sure we had it all right uh and then we launched um came up with the name zon support and the rest is history, yeah? I love it, I love it. You know, it's always those services that come out of a necessity, things that people really need that are so valuable. What I thought was so interesting about Zon Support was that I had never heard of anybody doing that before. So, you know, but when we got more in depth about what it is that you guys do uh, to reduce uh, low ratings and stuff like that, I was like, oh, well, actually, people could do that, you know? And if they don't want to do it, they can come to Zon Support. So I'm excited for you to show us today um, how we can do this and uh, also how you guys, how you're a little bit of your secret sauce about how you do that as well. Um, should we get into it? Yeah, sure. And and look, this is, Amy, this is very much a DIY session. You know, I'm kind of philosophical. If it's right for people to come to us, they're going to come to us. If it's not, then I, I hope we've just given out some value and made sure people are doing things just a, a little bit better than they were before they um, heard us or, or watched this. Yeah. Amazing. I love value first. That makes me happy. All right, guys. Oh. And if if you guys have your questions, we want to hear from you. Ask your questions in the chat. We're happy. And just say hi. We'd love to hear from you. Um, I see you guys out there. I see those viewers that are out there. So say hello in the chat and let us know if you have any questions. So, Greg, I'm going to show your, um, your presentation on the screen. I'm going to put you at the top of the order here um, yeah, sure. and take it away. All righty, here, here we go, here we go. So what I'm talking about here is returns and low star reviews. Uh, and, and the reason is, you know, the, the two are, are very much linked. 
okay? And and really, I mean, our, our whole niche is simply customer service. That's all we do. And so I always say that customer service is managing your existing sales while you go chase new ones. So it's not just a cost of doing business. It's actually a cost of holding on to the sales that you've actually uh, got already. And so if, you, if you're going to manage your customers and, and manage down and, you know, reduce your low star reviews, you don't want to be the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff, right? You, you, you need to get up, up, the, up the cliff somehow. And so one of the most important uh, places to start with this is, is the objective here, the underlying objective is to ret protect your return metrics. Because as you know, if you get too many, then you get a please explain from Amazon, uh, and then you you know it's a slippery slope. You end up with a suspension and a this and a that and a those. So so let's just go through a little bit of uh, what we find uh, actually works here. There, there's really a strong correlation between returns and low star reviews. Uh, plus, as I said, the, the upside is to actually resolve or actually avoid the low star reviews in the first place. And we, we run a, a running total in the business. So for the last 12 months, uh, we've, we've managed uh, just over, um, well, nearly 28,000 uh, returns. And interestingly, interestingly, about half of that volume has been low star reviews. So this is how we know the, the uh, relationship exists. So this is where you go to start setting this up in your seller central account. And many of you will know this, but for many people won't. So here we go. Uh, you navigate to the right hand side, you go to settings, notification preferences. And then what you do is you're going to scroll up and down in notification preferences. And if you haven't been in here before, go have a look around. There's quite a, an amazing resource of alerts or information you can get uh, from Amazon to let you know how some aspects of your business are running. And so what I'm wanting you to look for here is the returns, claims and recovery notifications now when this pops up on the right hand side obviously shaded out is going to be the the email address which is your merchant default contact this is how you set up your amazon account so you can still leave that in there and add a new email or you can decide no i don't want it going to that email i'm just going to put in a different email and so this email needs to be an email that you see every day not one that you create and look, oh, well, I'm going to put them off here and, and look at it later. You're either going to get serious about your customer service and start managing those existing sales uh, or you're not. And so if you've outsourced to us or somebody else, uh, then you can put in their email. If you're a, a larger, more scaled business and somebody in your team is looking after this, you can put in their email. So this feed of information from Amazon. Uh, will come through to you. And this is what a return um, notification looks like. It's obviously sitting in an email. You know, it'll be, dear Greg, um, you know, we've issued a, a refund for 43 bucks to Sarah, blah, blah, blah. So there's two amounts, two pieces of information here. One is the order ID, which is, I think, the most exciting part of the notification. Uh, the second is the re refund reason. Now, People just understand you want the refund reason to be customer return. If the refund reason is, you know, didn't arrive, okay, or refused order or whatever, we're, we're not interested in that because we already know what it was about. It didn't arrive, okay, or they refused uh, the acceptance of the order. So we're looking for customer returns. So what you're going to do is you're going to copy paste uh, that. Order ID at the top there, uh, you know, into your um, uh, into your orders and have a look and see what you can see about this customer. This is before you do anything else. And typically, this is the sort of thing that it's going to um, pull up for you. OK, um, you're going to see very interestingly here, see all three orders from this buyer. That might change the way that you're going to manage this customer. It might not. But it's an interesting piece of information to have. If it shows, as is on the screen here, that it's already been refunded by Amazon, so what? 
I, I don't care. So, so they have, right? This customer's in good standing. They've already been refunded. Okay, I'm still going to run through the process because we're wanting to try and get some communication going with this customer. So where do you see low star seller feedback or a low star product review if one of these has been dropped? Okay, this is, this is the key. Where is that on here? It's not in here. Well, it actually is. Bottom right hand corner, seller notes. This is how you need to you need to manage Amazon, right? They're not going to give you everything and you're not going to learn everything. We have a rule around our business. If you ever open an order, you go into seller notes and you drop in what did you do or what did you look up or what was it about? So if we've had a low star seller feedback on this order, in seller notes is going to be the date and it's going to say LSF, low star seller feedback, and just quickly what it was about because we know we've reached out to the low star seller feedback. So it will actually say, Greg, it will actually no. say LSF. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Amy. Good question. No, this is if you had a low star seller feedback, you've obviously gone into the order, you drop into seller notes and you put the date and you put low star seller feedback or LSF, you put something in there so you know this has happened. And this is so important because... Oh, so you're adding the yeah, notes here in exactly. this area. Exactly. You're bringing up the order based on the order ID. We had a little glitch earlier where we lost you for a minute. and okay. But it was you saw the order ID in the return notification, which yes. the email comes to your email address after you turn on the notification. Then you yes. grab the order ID. Then you yes. bring that up in your orders. And this is the order screen. And what Correct. you're wanting to do is correlate to see if you received a low star uh, review from that. Or a, low, or a low star seller feedback or a whatever. So any time that you're opening a customer order, there's got to be a, a reason that you open the order. So we always, in seller notes, put a very quick note in there of what it was about. And so what it means is, if you've had a low star, um, uh, sorry, if you've had a return alert and you pull up the order to have a look, you won't remember this necessarily, or maybe you will. But if two days ago you had a low star seller feedback, for example, then you've got the note in here that you've already been dealing with this order. If you obviously most 99.9% .9 of everybody has brand registry. So if you've sent you know, a message out to follow up from a low star review, you have quickly gone into the order ID uh, and you've dropped in a note that you've reached out to a low star product review. Are you with me? Yes. So this is your way, your log of keeping track of your orders exactly. and knowing where that correlation is happening. Exactly. Exactly. And so what it means is if, if any time you're opening an order, you always put in what you were looking at, that's that's a nugget, Amy, because it, I don't know, it might be about something else, but it might affect the way that you're responding to a customer. Um, in fact, it might make the decision, I ain't going to respond to this low star, um, to, sorry, right. to this return alert. Because I already know we've had all this other drama going on. And, and so it's just not appropriate. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you're just keeping track. Otherwise, you're flying blind and you might actually make things worse because exactly. you're reaching exactly. out to somebody that you've already yeah. taken care of them, whatever. And I know that's happened in my business before because we both of us have reached out to a customer and it's like, oh, my gosh, like I already reached out to that customer. Why did you send them that? We already... We already refunded them, you know, and then now now you have issues, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so th this is this is kind of the overarching process of how do you get everything that you know about a an order or a sale into one place. So if down the line you're coming back into this for some reason, just like that, you've got a snapshot of anything that's been going on or nothing that's been going on, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, we're following. Okay. And so this is the message that we're sending out. Now, you can do these manually. 
Uh, you know, you can edit some of the automations that you can get from various providers. But the message that we're wanting to say is, you know, thank you for buying our Porter White Mouse. Now, this is just in, in your local language, right? So you don't want to be pulling this some, somewhere from Amazon so it's going to bring your whole title up. This is a human talking to human. You know, thank you for buying our Motorola walkie-talkie. Thank you for buying our Bose speaker. Now, I'm not saying that it's a Bose meant to be waterproof, apparently, or showerproof or something. Um, just in local, you know, language that you'd use. You want to use your brand name so they know what it is. Um, and then what the object is, what the product is. Amazon just advises you wanted to return it. If you still have it, please let me know. Maybe we can save you the hassle of a return. Now, as I said, hey, when you pull up the return notification, it might already say that Amazon's, you know, refunded them. I don't care. This is just a strategy. I want to try and get this customer to talk to me. So, so don't over, you know, read everything and say, oh, look, if Amazon's already um, refunded it. There's nothing I can do. This is what you do. Okay. That makes sense. So now the response rate depends not very much on the niche, okay? Parts and accessories, you know, you guys who sell an automotive, people just don't respond, right? It's black and white. I don't know. Uh, obviously, if it's a higher priced item, there's a much stronger flow of comms. And for those of you who are selling in, you know, softer products like, um, you know, um, the baby or, or, you know, children's stuff or whatever, don't think that a, that a mother or a home father is going to cut you any slack. If the product was meant to be right and it's not right, then, you know, you're on deck to make sure you fix it and, and, and get it right, okay? Now, you know, there, there can be a, an overwhelming volume like a fire hose. So, you know, you, you can filter this down to a variation level. Um, you know, a lot of our clients, you know, where the, where the volume is, is right up there, they just have this running at product launch because that's a critical period. So what I try to say to people is you need to be strategic with your Amazon account and you, then you need to be strategic with with every every product um, that you're actually um, running um, because, you know, they might be quite diverse or they might be a, a product you've got which has got a little bit of a problem and you're trying to sell through. And so you just need to create a, a little strategy around you know, this particular white mouse because there's just, you know, some little niggle that's wrong and I need to sell it through. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So so this is kind of, you know, part and parcel of trying to avoid low star reviews or trying to get some communication going. And sometimes you're going to have a communication going through here and you don't actually know at that time that a low star review has already been dropped. So you really need to focus and, and you know, treat customers and, and try and look after them as, you know, as as well as you can. So just so I'm understanding, Greg, the, and by the way, Mark is here and he says, hello all, Mark from China. Remember we met Mark in China. Yeah, he was yeah. with us on the trip, part of our China fam. He says, Greg, how did I not know you did this? <laughs> Well, we were just so busy looking at other stuff. And the focus up there was, you know, was all about. Um, we are busy know, sourcing, oil. right? Good to yeah. see you, Mark. So I'm just making sure um, that I understand. So as soon as Amazon sends us the return notification, yes. we're going to pull up the order ID. We're going to just take a look at it, take some seller notes, maybe check to see if we had a one-star review that came out of that, whatever. We're going to look and then make some seller notes, and then we're gonna immediately reach out to that customer with that template that you showed us, where we're yes. gonna say, hey, can I save you the hassle of a return? So instead of waiting, uh, as soon as we get a return notification, whether or not there was a low star review, we reach out at that moment and say, can I save you the hassle? Hey, I'm here, hey, I care. And our goal is just to get them engaging with us. And when we reach out, are we utilizing Amazon's own communication system at that point? Yes, we are. We are. Yeah. And is there an easy way to connect, to contact the customer directly from that order order ID? How are you contacting that customer? Are you, do you have a process 
for yes, like so, so, so basically as soon as you've um as soon as you brought up that order id okay let me go back here there's contact via victoria so this is within your seller central account so you're clicking on victoria ah. and then as you know that's that's going to bring you up uh maybe some options or, or good question amy um i need to drop some more slides in here maybe that's going to bring you up uh that the only thing you can do is send her a um um you know a a courtesy refund offer even if she's got one okay uh it it might say that you know that she's blocked messages uh it might be open that you can actually send you know a, a complete message so depending on the options that are available obviously you you've got to tailor what you're um what you're doing as i say sometimes you know the buyers opted out of messages there's nothing you can do okay yeah. that's good to know because you know it's yeah. important for us to have this process to reach out to every customer but if you yeah. can't reach out then we need to know if, that if you can't reach out you can't reach out but no, nonetheless you'd still want to have dropped in there that uh you know the date and uh we we just use initials but you know return notification or something because i don't know down the line if you come back into this order you then you don't know you need to go and look up anything straight there you know it's uh you know return notification or you know messages blocked or whatever so you just know in a nanosecond uh what's going on with an order at any time if you go into it down the line okay particularly people here if you end up with an A to Z claim, it's like, what? I, I never knew anything about this. You get the uh, order ID and the A to Z claim, you go pull up the order ID and you're like, ah, oh, okay, this this is this is what we've already done or tried to do. Does that make sense? Yeah, completely. Okay, okay. So yeah, so we're, maybe a we're very on the fire step. hose slide. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm used to that with my military background. You know, everything that we had to learn in the military was like learn by oh, fire hose, like yeah. fire hose of information. So yeah, I, I can imagine that. I can imagine that. Okay. So coming through into low star product reviews. Okay. What we're trying to do here is engage direct with the customers. Okay. So we all know about our brand registry dashboard. Uh, we can either send a message or offer a courtesy refund. I mean, I know if the product's high, it's a leap of faith. What do you do? But, you know, how do you find their order ID? Because when you're sitting in your brand registry dashboard, all you've got sitting in front of you is, am I going to reach out to these people or not? So, you know, you, you're going to reach out to them. You've got no choice. But let me go back. If the, reef, if the, if the um, low star review clearly is a roast, low star review and they're so there's nothing you can do about it, right? They've got you right between the eyes. Then sometimes you're better just not to reach out. You know, if you get a Vine reviewer and they're waxing on lyrical about this, that, and the other, you know, in a whole paragraph, it's like, am I going to achieve anything by reaching out to these people? Um, probably not. Do I want to? Probably not. So, you, you know, you've got to use some common sense here if that makes sense. Okay? Yeah. So... If you've decided, okay, I'm going to reach out and I can manage to send them a decent message, or I've got to send them one of Amazon's awful templates, better than nothing, okay, go to sent messages. As soon as you've sent the courtesy refund offer, go straight to sent messages. In the sent messages, the order ID is there, people. You can see the order ID. And if you've not tuned into this before, um, what you need to do is when you open that order ID, you're going to see in the right hand corner if you've been dropping notes and if you've been talking to an, a, a customer about something, you're going to be seeing, you're going to see in a nanosecond if you've already spoken to them. Okay. So, what I say to people is go to send orders, you see this, okay, down on the right hand side, like I'm saying, you've put, you've gone into the order, you've seen anything that you've written that's going on. You, just jump in and send a message. Say what the hell you like, okay? It right. needs to be personal. You need to be showing empathy, acknowledgement, you know, some sort of resolution, a, a little bit of that. But to go back a step here. So then, you're, so you're I in. get it. 
So I go to the, I go to my sent messages after I offer like the courtesy refund or using one of Amazon's yes. awful templates within the brand registry yes. area, right? Then I can click, then go into sent messages, click on the order ID, and then I can contact them from there. Exactly. Amazing. So even, even if you we not know this, it's okay. All right. It's because we spend our entire life in customer service. That's our wheelhouse. I know it's crazy. That's all that we do. Okay. Well, and we have a question from Jim. Can we take a question? Yeah. So Jim, thank you for watching from LinkedIn. He wants to know how can I get notifications when customers drop negative feedback in the account health voice of the customer page so I can deal with this customer. In the account health. Uh, well, it depends. If there's a list of order IDs there, you can. I, I can't think, Amy, uh, off uh, off my head. Oh, if it's like ID seller feedback, there. right? Um, voice of the customer. I think yeah. there's an option. There's an option under voice of the customer to contact them. Well, yeah. In, anything to do with low star seller feedback, you just got, got to go into low star seller feedback. So if you're in notifications and something comes up, Maybe you just got to navigate to your low star um, seller feedback, and and because that all comes through to you. And, and oh, and Jim just wants to know how does he get the notifications that there's been a low star review? You probably have to manually go in there, right? Yes. Yeah. You. I or mean, there's you, some you know, software that will check it, track it. I think like Helium Ten has a, there is. Like a yeah. Game yeah. where they'll notify you if you got a one star review. So yeah. then you would automatically get a notification. But I don't exactly. think there's a way to set it up on Amazon. I think you manually have to like. No, I, I sitting here. I don't. I don't believe there is. No, no. I mean, wherever you can, you know, what you want to do is you want to get alerts or information presented to you, rather than you having to go and and look it up, sort of thing. Yeah. So yeah. I think again, ninety nine percent of people must be using a Helium ten or. I don't know, a Zon yeah. Guru or, you know, Feedback Wiz or one of those programs to do something. So a lot of, a lot of these softwares have um, alerts and different notifications you can set up, yeah? Yep. Okay, back on track. Okay. <laughs> so here, here we are. And so importantly, what I'm so, I want to say to you here is when you send the message, don't send somebody a, a whole war and peace that says, okay, this happened and this went wrong and now we're going to do this and now we're going to do this and this and this. What you want to do is just try to send a, an email, which is enough content in there to get them to reply. Because mm. if you send everything and they're like, ah, I don't like that. You're just not going to get a response. It's almost like if you tease the information, if you send enough and a little bit of something in there to encourage them to then come back to you, trust me, if a customer comes back to you on something, then you're absolutely on the pathway of of tailoring a resolution. Okay, so right. don't assume that it's exactly all of this and and this is what it is. And and this is what goes wrong when you've outsourced to a, a business, typically offshore, um, and they just got a whole lot of templates to send. And it's like, okay, right, that's this one. Bam, they're going to get this whole template. Job done. Okay. You've got to read in between the lines. You've got to have a sense of what this might be about. There might be something that's written in the low star review. There might be something that's sitting in your low star seller feedback, some little nugget. There might be some weakness. You know this white mouse, damn it. You know there's a slight problem with it already. So you're going to try and identify that you already know something or you're fixing something. I don't know. You know what I'm Greg, saying? I'm going to send you a new mouse for Christmas. <laughs> Listen, look, it's working well, and I know it doesn't ever. I don't. I know the covers have gone off the bottom, but anyway, I love it. Okay, Amy, I'm going to run out of time here, so I'm going to have to go fast. Okay, okay let's do it. All right, customer pathways. This again, this is what's going to underpin halving your returns and low star reviews, having a significant impact. Okay, there are two pathways you can create in, on your listings. So your customers can find you when they need you. Okay. We all know about all this kind of stuff. And Amy, you'd be an expert in all of these areas. Okay. There's one part that's missing off the typical list that people are, are looking at on their Amazon listing. And that is product guides and documents. Now, there's a wide range of op 
uh, docs you can upload. You've got to have brand registry, registry to do this. And this is what I call self-help. If you think of a listing and you page down on the listing, in between your product information and your videos, there is product guides and documents. Okay? So you're in your Amazon brand registry. Okay? Um, it opens up this aspect for you. And it gives you 30 documents that you can actually load into here. And look, isn't this great? It's an installation manual, for heaven's sake. You can have a user manual, a comparison chart, a user guide, a brochure. If you put nothing else in here, people, put a brochure in here, something about your, your product, okay? The ones that are highlighted are the ones that we find clients use most often. Compatibility guide, instructions for use, a size guide, People can never get their size right, okay? FAQ, so, right? Or, or a troubleshooting guide. And then there's another 12 more specialized docs for people who are selling all sorts of very technical equipment, and they don't like any of these, but they love the other dozen that are sitting there, okay? Here's the link. SellerCentralAmazon.com, blah, 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 okay? So you log into your Seller Central account, you know, you're going to uh, click onto this link, and I should have had it ready for the chat. I'm sorry. Um, and it's going to open up product guides and documents. And so what you're then going to do is you're going to go through um, and find out which of these documents works for you. Now, this is Amazon. Okay, you can't put anything in there that you shouldn't. Okay, this is not a way to get a, you know, a review, you know, for a, PayPal cashback, for goodness sake, okay? This is, <laughs> this, this is actually to help your customers. You know, I, some, you know, on the, these groups all the time, people are maneuvering around how to do this and that. If you serve your customer, you've got a good product and you've got a good level of service, you're going to get the reviews you want. If there's something wrong or something's dicey, then you, you're going to get shot between the eyes. What can I say? So these guides are a great way for you to showcase some stuff and whenever we've got you know anybody with a product that some people can get wrong put the faq in there okay um you know if if there's sizes people can never get their size right there's a lot of little bits of information you can put in there so people can can kind of get it right and if i go back here if they notice this I mean, obviously, I can't force customers to come here. They've got to look at this before they click buy. But if customers, if buyers are going through your listing and they see installation manual or they see, okay, um, comparison chart or a size guide or something, if they click in that, Amy, they're going to make a more, infirm, more informed purchase. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. It's prevention, preventative. <laughs> exactly. So, so this is me trying to be at the top of the cliff or, or just, you know, one shelf down sort of thing, right? Um, this is the second area is Amazon Answers, okay? So we're still on your listing. It's not appropriate for all products because many listings simply don't get questions. We know this, right? People say that. But I'm like, okay, what do you mean you don't get questions? Maybe you get somebody to ask some questions. <laughs> Have a look at your competitors, okay? AI is great for this. You can go and you can grab all of your reviews. You can grab all sorts of information from all sorts of people and get some sort of insight. What and did so, you yes, say AI? What's AI? AI. Did I? I don't know what I said. You said AI is great for this. Uh, AI. AI. A AI. AI. Oh, AI. Sorry. <laughs> I was my, like, what is that? It's my American I know accent. <laughs> it's, my Ameri it's my American accent. <laughs> I love it. It's okay. My it. It's my New so Zealand accent. Okay. You're saying we, so, let's make sure we, we pull, you know, pull all the data, whether we use AI or a download reviews tool, like uh, yes. seller.tools has one that's free yeah. from your Chrome extension. But we want that data so we can look at it and we can see like what might there be questions that people might have about my product. And then yes. if people aren't asking questions, we can have some friends or somebody else ask a question on our listing. It doesn't cost them anything, right? I haven't seen anything anywhere 
in Amazon terms of service until they watch this and come out with a rule that says you can't ask somebody to ask a question. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say here is make sure it's something sensible for goodness sake. And Amy, to you, what you were alluding to before, if you look at all these, this information from your own listings and competitors with a similar product, you might get some insight there into the type of questions people kind of have, but they've never bothered to ask on Amazon Answers, right? A lot of people don't even know or they don't even bother. So mm. if you even looking at your product, and well, I'm not going to talk about my white mouse anymore. I'm going to talk about my Motorola walkie-talkie, okay? You live on a farm. So, <laughs> you know, if somebody's right down the back, how do you get hold of them, right? It's not on a cell phone. So what I'm saying to you is if you know there's going to be, you know, typically – little questions or things, even from what you've just been working in, in product guides and documents that you know there's this, people often want to know this information, ask the question, you can answer it, okay? Make sure you seed your listing with 100% appropriate content. So don't put BS in here, either put something meaningful or don't, because otherwise you, you'll you compromise the look of your listing. Now, a little change has come in uh, recently, and now we're in um, 2023, of course. Um, Q&A now seems to be moving into a search field. So sometimes it doesn't sit up there, Amazon Answers, right up near the price and everything else, and, and customers have asked this question. Sometimes we're seeing it in the search field. And interestingly, whatever you put in the search field is going to take you to low-star reviews, five-star reviews, you know, all over the place. So I just mentioned that in passing. Only reply when you're logged into your Seller Central account. And so this will flag your answer as being from the seller. So if somebody's looking at Amazon answers, what's going to have more impact? You know, when it's no. got you know, seller or when it's got DSJ SWS, who, <laughs> bless their cotton socks, have weighted in with their opinion on, you know, my Motorola and my little technical question, and they really don't know. These people I, are well, I love how, like, on my litter box cleaner, like, customers have – they just love it, and so they find themselves, like, being experts on it. So we, we respond, but there's always, like, 50 different answers, I, like, you know, of people's opinions, which is good, but I agree with you. It's much more impactful that they know and out of those 50 and, answers that it's coming from the seller. It is, right? and it's almost <laughs> like this is um, – hello, hello. You know, this is <laughs> pick me, pick me, read this. Because right. some answers, as you know, Amy, they're wrong. They are just wrong. Okay. And Greg, we do I do have a couple of questions and we yes. actually have some questions from the audience. Um yes. and I know we're we're like running out of time, but yes. um my question is at what point so earlier when you reached out about the return, right? And you're like, hey, you're you're getting the conversation going and yes. um or you find the one star review and then you click the order ID and then you click the contact and you reach out that way. Um what do you think it when is the right time? Do they just automatically change their review? How do we, I know people have that question. Oh, How do we get them to change their one star to you, a five star? You can. You you can't. And look, we're 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 more Amazon compliant than Amazon. If there's a if there's a if there's a line in the sand with Amazon terms of service, we want all want to be a giant step away from it. Okay. So mm -hmm. for our clients, uh, you know, some people well seller feedback is easy. Let's talk about product reviews. They're the real pain point for people. If yeah. you ask people to change or update or do anything to their review. It's against terms of service. Do people do it? Yes, they do. If you're going to do it, don't use the word review. You know, don't use the word upgrade. Don't use the word change. We live in a we live in a world of bots, and a bot is going to potentially pick up a word and flag your. What if I say something like, um, "Is there anything else I can do to?" Um, to serve you or to to help you solve this issue and they say no there isn't and we say well we would so appreciate you know we appreciate being able to help you today we'd so appreciate your feedback are we allowed to say that yes but don't use the word feedback either but yes <laughs> what, okay. what word can i use uh, i hope to hear from you please uh, tell me 
Okay, yeah. got it. So keep it, Some, and it just naturally, I'm sure, it just naturally yes. happens. Like, it naturally yes. gets. And, and, and get this, we've had people reply and say, so how do I change my review? Okay. Oh, okay, there you go. So then if the customer is asking, you can say, oh, you can just go back right back into your reviews and, and yes. change them. Yeah, but understand that, be very careful and try to not use those words because if it pings for some reason and it suspends you for some reason. Yeah, you don't want you know any kind of like review manipulation. Uh, Even if the customer started it, you want yeah. just to say, but, you can do that within your real. account, you know? <laughs> yeah. but, but um, let's be real, you know, you, you've got to try to do something and it's for each, each seller's sensitivity to trying stuff. We've got some sellers who say, you just get in there and you just say anything, I want these things resolved and we have other people who say look i just i don't want to even go anywhere near anything you know yeah so it it, it depends on your on your sensitivity okay and trevor wants to know he said i just tried sending a message for a returned order and amazon says undelivered i tried a few different order numbers is yes. that because they've opted out yeah yeah typically yeah. it is typically so it is Nothing you can do there, Trevor. Most likely they've opted out of messaging, so it's not going to work. As Greg said earlier, move on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then one more question. Jim says, I've had success in using what you're teaching once the customer is happy and gives me a chance to fix the problem for them. How do you go about getting slash asking them to change their original feedback or do you stay away from this? Okay, Jim, we just answered this question. So that great question. And I'm glad I had the same question as you. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. back to you, Greg. <laughs> okay. So so just quickly here. So we're talking, we're on Amazon answers at the moment, all right? This is what we're talking about doing. Hang on, are we going to seed some Amazon answers if they're not already in there? Yeah. Uh, you know, what can we do? So you a question arrives wherever it ar arrives from. Your reply needs to be an independent sentence, short, direct, no fluff, sound bites, okay? No need for a hi or thanks for your question or wax on lyrical about how good your product is and then give the answer. I want just a pure sentence. Here's one. How many fluid ounces come out per pump? So we went back to the client, they looked it all up and they came back from their tech guys and this is what we would say, our and whatever your brand name is and your product name in the conversational style. So let's say this is a pump, okay? Dispenses approximately 0.118 fluid ounces per pump. Kind regards, uh, you know, whatever your customer service name is at uh, Motorola Customer Care. It's just a sentence. People are time poor, right? If you're not sure about something and you're going through FAQs, as well and this is a great thing then to go and backfill in your amazon guides and and in your product documents in your faqs because somebody's asked this question just the sound bite this is also sitting on your listing and hello who else is who else is going across listings is it google is it is it information that's going to end up elsewhere absolutely it is yeah. so i've already covered this all right backfill your product got documents so here's the end amy refund alerts if you roll back a, a little while we talked about protecting your return metrics we've talked about having to deflect low star reviews in the first place and we and what i didn't talk about here but we all know this you know if you have lower level of returns if you have lower um low star reviews etc it increases the valuation of your business. Low star reviews, what you want to do here, you want to have proactive comms. You want to have some sort of engagement strategy. So we know we sent out the, the courtesy refund offer. We know we go into sent messages and straight away we can jump in there and say anything we like. Make sure you know what you're going to jump in and say, for heaven's sake. Don't just shoot from the hip because it's a morning and things are going well and you're happy or... It's a morning and it's going all bad and you're really in a nasty mood, right? Be, be prepared. Yeah. The correlation between low star reviews and returns, I've proven that. The vital importance of using order notes. This is one of the, you know, the secret sauce that we have in, in running our business. 
this is how we know so much about what's going on. We talked about product documents and guides. And can options. I interrupt Greg real quick, just back on the last one, Trevor wants yes. to know what is the end step there? Do you ask the customer to cancel the return and then refund their money from Seller Central? No. You, no. Yeah, okay. No, and good, good question. Basically, um, if they're not already refunded and, 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 you know, sometimes what we've done is we've read and we know we want a refund, they're not already refunded, we've already gone in and refunded them, okay? So then what we're doing is we, we, we let me go back. We've read the low star review. It's, it's a bad one, right? We need yeah. to do something, okay? We send courtesy refund offer. Don't wait for them to come back and say, I want a refund. What we do is as soon as we've sent the courtesy refund offer, we jump straight back into the order. We refund it, okay, if it's not already refunded. Then when we're jumping in behind that courtesy refund offer, you know, because we ignore whatever's opened up the communication channel, we say, hey, just letting you know, we have, we are so sorry that this, that, and the other was wrong, you know. I've re, you know, I, 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 I have refunded your order. Here is the notification from Amazon. It can take up to 24 hours for this to show in your account. And then ask them, you know, to please, you know, tell me this or, or can I know this or this or some open ended question to try and get somebody, if they see this, to actually come back to you, right? Got it. Yeah. So you're just opening the channel. So you, the re, issuing a refund is situation dependent, as we've talked about. Like all these yes. things are digging in, not just doing templates, understanding yes. the business, having somebody responsible for customer support, and um, actually looking at that and making sure that um, that if you are offering a courtesy refund, then it's all about those comps. You're opening up the communication channel. You're saying, hey, I just refunded you. Sorry, so sorry about what happened there. You know, is there yeah. anything else? Would you let me know more about this problem? Because yeah. we want to make sure that we fix it. We want to address yeah. this issue. If there's if there's some way you can get some engagement going, that is your opportunity. Everybody moans and says, I can't contact low star reviewers. I've just showed you how. But for heaven's sake, make sure you've got your ducks in a row with sound bites, with you know little things that you're going to use all mm. right and then personalize them for heaven's sake and then and then drop that straight in there and it's, trevor it's is asking trevor is asking how do we actually save them the hassle of the return so is it like let's solve the problem oh. let's refund it let's actually fix the issue well we say to them don't return it now a little snippet here we should have a, another whole session on this i know <laughs> okay i shouldn't have dropped the other things in there okay so what you're doing here when you go and do the refund, go and go in there and do adjustment. Okay. So if you're doing, if you've dropped in there and you're doing a refund for a customer and it's got a drop down box for the reason, use adjustment. Okay. Not, you know, not a product return. So, and then forget it, then forget about it. Life is good. What happens then when the return notifications come through? If you see product adjustment, you're like, that was me. Okay. If you've, if you've refunded the product and put, you know, uh, for a return, then chances are you're going to reach out to that customer. And, but you just did that. Am I making sense here? Yeah. Yeah. And then one more question from yes. Mark. I mean, we do, we got to have Greg back on the show because you guys have so many great questions. This is clearly a hot topic. Mark wants yeah. to know, can you do anything about removing existing one-star reviews? Amazon has sent some customers' products, and I know a lot of sellers have dealt with this. Amazon has sent some customers' products that have been used and returned to them, which was clearly not my fault. And I think the answer is in communication, but... Look, there are some services out there who will read through the, the every single review using AI to try to find angles within Amazon terms of service, okay, um, in order to be able to appeal a review. Yeah. This is this is not something we specialize in because we would consume a massive number of hours, okay, to try yeah. to get some result. 
if it's pretty obvious and you can get a link uh, in in terms of all those listings that uh, all the detail Amazon has, which is eligible for a um, an appeal, yes, you can. But I can't just give one. And you can still you can still go into that low star review, click inside of the brand analytics uh, or the brand dashboard, and you can still yes. click the order ID, and you can still contact the customer and say, "Hey, we noticed you returned this item. Like, you know, you still they can use your template to actually open the conversation." Now, obviously, in Mark's case, some of these are old, but new ones yes. that come in if this ever happens again, you can open the com communication. Yes. You know, and, and this is when we're onboarding clients. It's kind of a deep dive into specifically the niche, the products and the different angles that we're going to go on in order to try and manage these areas, if that makes sense. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're kind of talking here at 10,000 feet. OK. Yeah. So we quickly we've talked about um, product guides and documents. So now you know where to go to use these. And I really encourage you because, you know, a lot of customers if you you know you all must have a brand website you'd be surprised at how many questions we get through brand websites from people who bought off amazon so they just go google something to sort it out you know yeah. not everybody's joined at the hip to amazon and asked them for everything for heaven's sake okay so you know just just be aware of that amazon answers we've spoken about it's got to be appropriate for your product so if there's questions that you gathered from your insights, you know people have probably got, then find a way to get them asked. Make sure the answers are an independent statement so they be sound bites that can be picked up anywhere and make sense. And it's got to be a natural, you know, flow. Otherwise, it's just going to look fake, isn't it? Okay? Yeah. Amazing at home. Amy, I think you said we had 30 minutes. I don't dare look at the clock. <laughs> it's only been 50 minutes but we had so many great questions you guys thank you so much and you know greg i'm sure everybody wants to know how do they get in touch with zon support how do they get onboarded with you guys so you can dig into their customer support and you can help them with this stuff didn't sure. you have a slide on that <laughs> I, yeah, well and if there's anybody still here amy okay is customer care really the best use of your time OK, I mean, customer issues, replacements, return, low star reviews, you know, all this kind of stuff is working in your business and not on it. So I like to think that we we create time for sellers to focus on the needle moving stuff. Right. Yeah. Uh, supply chain. Look, we were just in China, weren't we? You know, managing your inventory, your social media, PPC. Maybe you just want some time out. I don't know. So here's a link. You know, if you if you come to us for any services using, you know, zonsupport.com forward slash at home, we'll give you a hundred bucks off your first um, invoice. Importantly, <laughs> go register, go register here now, because what we'll also do is we'll send you our latest product insert guide. And, you know, we, we spend so much time on these. I think we've got some some good aspects some things that you, you should think of. OK, so. You're not buying anything. We're simply going to send this through to you um, as as a way of saying, well, look, here's something else we believe we can we can add value to you about, um, and then um, conversations will flow from there. So you can either reach us at hello at zonsport.com, uh, or you can go through the form and get the product insert guide. I there want the go. product insert guide. Can you send me? Yeah. <laughs> It's I'm going to register. <laughs> I didn't know you had product inserts too. Of course you do. That would, that's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Well, part, part of onboarding, you know, part of onboarding clients is really, you know, looking at what they've already got because I want to own the product insert guide because if it's something that you're putting in front of the customer, then I want to have some influence on that because if they've read it, have you created a pathway for them to come talk to us? Yeah. Yeah. This, this yeah. is the whole this is a whole new session that we should do. And this is kind of, you know, where we're at in life. We can do a you know? session on inserts? Okay, you guys, put it in the chat. Do you want to see Greg come back to give us some yeah. even more in-depth sessions on inserts, everything else? We're going to have Greg back. We got yeah. you. <laughs> lot, lot, lots of other stuff, right? And, and this is the essence of Zon Support, right? We're all, you know, we're all lo locals. We're, we're all native English speakers based in the U.S., 
you know, real people dealing with real people, understanding stuff and reading in between the lines. There is kind of a difference that sits in there. And this yeah. is nothing against all the outsourced teams in the Philippines and Pakistan and India and everywhere else. You know, you can't beat a lifelong learning in English. You know, it's inherently yeah. you just know stuff or you read stuff and understand it. You know, yes, yeah. we outsource a lot of back office and other tasks. It's stuff, the same way I feel when I go to China. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm a foreigner there. I get it. You know, it's, exactly. it's fine. The I English love it. Perfect, I'm still a foreigner. I know. The English is perfect, but sometimes it's, <laughs> it's a complete mess, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. Well, okay. Greg, thank you so much for being here today. Everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with me and Greg and asking these questions. We'll definitely have, have Greg back on another Wednesday Wisdom. And um, thank you guys so much. If you are not joining us next week at the holiday party in Austin, what are you doing? Go to sellermeetup.com. Join us at the holiday party in Austin. We would love to see you. It's going to be incredible. Um, and... We will see you guys next week on Wednesday Wisdom. Thank you, Greg. We appreciate okay. you. All righty. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.